Good afternoon, students. Today is Tuesday, 18 January 2022. This is the first recording for ethics. I hope you're in the right place. I'm Keith Burgess Jackson. Welcome back to the university for another semester. Uh, today I'd like to go over the syllabus with you for the course and also the reading list. It shouldn't take too long. It certainly won't take the full period. So let me get started by directing your attention to the syllabus. And by the way, if you haven't been to Canvas yet and looked at what's posted for this course, you can pause the video right now and do that. If you go to Canvas, uh, if you pause this video and go to Canvas, you'll notice when you click on modules on the left side of the screen for this course, you'll see a number of items that have been posted already, including the syllabus. I would recommend that you print the syllabus right now and also the reading list, and then when you've gotten them printed, bring them back to your computer and resume the video. That way you can follow along as I discuss those documents. Okay, so I assume now you have the syllabus and the reading list in front of you. Let me turn to my own copy of the syllabus and we'll get started. Okay, you'll see some information at the top of the syllabus. It's just basic information about me and about where my office is located. There all, there's also a phone number which rings into the departmental office. There is a, an email address which I encourage you to use. If you need to talk to me about something course related, use my email. It's easy to remember. If you don't have your syllabus in front of you, it's my initials, KBJ at uta.edu. I check my UTA email at least twice every day, usually in the morning and again at night, sometimes more often than that. And so I will get your message fairly soon after you send it, and I'll reply to you as soon as I can. Okay, so that'll be our main way of communicating this semester. In fact, yesterday I sent a mass email to all of you informing you that the first lecture would be posted today. And that's what I'm doing now. Okay, the office hours this semester are uh, 9.30 to 10.30, which is the period just before we meet at 11 o'clock. Now, office hours won't be held until we go back into the classroom. In fact, let me spend a few minutes talking about that. As you know, UTA has gone online until for February. Now we don't meet until the following Tuesday. So for us, the first in-class lecture will be the 8th of February. That would be the very earliest. Now we don't know what will happen between now and then. It's possible that UTA will, um, as the 4th of February approaches, it's possible that UTA will extend the online teaching. It's also possible that UTA will send us back into the classroom. And the third possibility is some kind of hybrid course. Uh, you should be familiar with that from the previous semester. The university wants to keep the density of the classrooms to a minimum. So they recommended that half the students meet on the one of the two days a week and the other half meet on the other day. Now that shouldn't be a problem for us because this class that you're in has only 10 students. Um, now, it's possible that another couple of students may add the class, but I don't expect it to get much larger at all. So even if the university asked us to go to hybrid, we have so few students that we could still spread out in the classroom without dividing the class up. At any rate, let's just wait and see what happens in the next couple of weeks. I expect another message at some point. So we're going to assume that we're doing online lectures for the next six periods, counting today. And on the 8th of February, let's assume that we'll be going back into the classroom. Well, not back, but we'll be going into the classroom for the first time this semester. Okay? So let's continue with the syllabus. I wrote up a course description to give you some idea of what the course is all about. Ethics is a branch of philosophy. 
one of the oldest and most important branches. And ethics itself is d divided up into various subcategories. And we're going to cover only one of them in this course. We're going to cover what's called normative ethical theory. So the focus of this course will be to try to understand what it is that makes right acts right and wrong acts wrong. What exactly is it that makes an act right as opposed to wrong? And there are various theories about the answer to that question. Utilitarianism, for example, says that what makes an act right is that it produces the greatest balance of happiness over unhappiness or pleasure over pain. And there are other theories as well. We're going to study several different theories in this course. Okay, so that'll be our focus. We're going to try to figure out, as philosophers do, exactly what it is that makes an, a right act right and a wrong act wrong. Now, I assume that you make moral judgments probably every day. When you're driving, if someone cuts you off, you probably make a moral judgment. You may even swear at the driver who did so. But you may say that that was wrong or that that was um, rash or uh, even cruel what somebody did while driving. Uh, you may say that it, it was exploitative. Those are all moral judgments. Um, most people, most thoughtful people want to know what it is that makes all of their judgments of right action right and what it is that makes all of their judgments of wrong action wrong. And so, again, that's what we'll be doing in this course, trying to look at various theories that answer that question. Okay, so read over that paragraph that I wrote for you. It has a diagram uh, and uh, that'll explain what the course is all about. Let's move on now to course materials. As I say on page two of the syllabus, there is a book for this course. In fact, I brought my copy in to show you. This is my copy. I'll hold it up close to the screen. It's a book written by philosopher Fred Feldman, who is still alive. Uh, he's an old man now, but he's still alive, as I recall, when I checked a year or so ago. This book is entitled Introductory Ethics. It was published in 1978, which is 44 years ago. This book has never been published in a hardcover, so every copy will be soft cover like this, paperback. It has never been published in a second or subsequent edition. This is the only edition that was ever published. <clears throat> I think I asked Fred once, why did you never revise and republish this book? And his answer was, he had other things to work on. He didn't want to spend any more time revising this book. It's a very good book. I've used many books over my career, during my career, and this is among the very best that I've used. And so I keep coming back to it. This book is available not only in new copies, but used copies on the internet. I believe that UTA bookstores should have it in stock if you want to buy a copy. But let me tell you something, you don't need to buy this book. And the reason is I have a, I have a scanned copy of this book and I'm going to be posting individual chapters on Canvas. So if you refrain from buying this book, you'll be in good shape because you can always print out the chapters as I post them on Canvas. So I'm doing this as a service to you to save you money. This book, even though it's very old, is quite expensive. Um, and the used copies may be all marked up and almost unreadable. Now, if you want to buy a copy of this book, feel free to do so. I'm not trying to discourage you. What I'm saying is that you don't have to buy it. Okay, I'll post the chapters. In fact, chapter one is already posted on Canvas. Some of you may have seen that already. There will be other materials. In fact, some are already posted. I make handouts along the way and post them. You should always print whatever you find on Canvas and have it available when you're watching my videos. Or later, when you come into the classroom, you should have all of the printed materials in your notebook so you can follow along as I lecture. Uh, so really, the course won't cost you anything other than the paper 
that you use to print the materials, and that shouldn't cost too much. Certainly not as much as a book. Okay, so the, those are the materials for the course. What are the course requirements? As you can see on page two of the syllabus, I'm going to hold my syllabus, up, put my notebook up. Sometimes my notebook falls down with a clatter. I hope it doesn't, and I'll try to catch it. But it helps me see without looking all the way down. There are three exams in this course. All three of them will be given on Canvas. I'm sure by now you've had exams on Canvas, so you know what I'm talking about. The exams in this course will have two parts. Each exam will have 10 true-false questions, each of which is worth one point. So that's 10 times 1, or 10 points. It will also have 30 multiple choice questions, and each of those is worth three points. So 3 times 30 is 90. When you add 90 to 10, you get 100 points. So each of the three exams in this course will be worth 100 points. And the total number of points for the whole course is therefore 300. You need 90% of those 300 points, or 270, to get an A in the course. And it's entirely up to you whether you achieve that. So your goal on each exam is to get as many points as you can and hope that at the end of the semester you fall just above one of the break the breakoff points or one of the dividing points. So try to get 270 points and you'll get an A. You need 240 points to get a B. So anything between 240 and 269 would be a B and so forth. So uh, keep in mind you're just, you're just trying to rack up points along the way. You shouldn't even be thinking in terms of letter grades until the end of the semester when I assign them to you. Now the three exam dates are already chosen. You can see on page two of the syllabus that they're listed. On Thursday, 17 February, we will take the day off. You will go into Canvas and take your exam. The exam must be taken during the same time we would ordinarily be meeting in the classroom. So think of it this way. If we were meeting in the classroom, you would have to be there in class on that day taking, to take the exam. Well, I'm going to do the same thing on Canvas. You will go into Canvas at 8 o'clock, I'm sorry, you'll go into Canvas at 11 o'clock on the 17th of February and get started. You'll have one hour and 15 minutes to finish the exam, just as you would in the classroom. All right? So that's the first exam. The second exam will be run the same way, and it will be given on the 31st of March, which is a Thursday. The third exam will be given on the 10th of May, 10th of May, which is after our final lecture period. That's a Tuesday. Now, on the syllabus, you may have noticed in a couple of places that I have two sections of ethics. Ordinarily, when I teach ethics, which is every spring, I have two sections. It's 2312-001 and 2312-002. Well, guess what? This semester, so few students enrolled in my two ethics classes that the university decided that the second of the two sections will not be offered. So only 2312 dash 001, which is your section, is being offered. So throughout the syllabus, if you see any reference to 2312-002, just ignore it. That has to do with the other course, which will now not be offered. All right, so your course is being offered. I can tell you that there are 10 students, only 10 of you are enrolled in the first section of ethics. There may be a couple more who add. We'll see what happens. Okay, so those are the course requirements. I don't take attendance. I have in the past, but now with COVID and with online teaching, there's really no point to taking attendance. So don't worry about that being part of your grade. And also things like homework, um, written assignments, nothing like that. Just the three exams that I talked about a moment ago.
Okay, I want to mention something else. A year ago, during the height of COVID, when we were online for the entire semester, I recorded and posted videos for um, all of my ethics lectures. And those videos are still available on YouTube. That's where I store my videos. I have a channel on YouTube and I store all of my UTA videos there for all of my courses. So since we're going to be doing online lectures for the first three weeks of class, which is a total of six lectures, actually five, not counting today, today's lecture I'm doing live. This is not a recording from a year ago. This is the 18th of January right now. Um, so that means that the five other videos that I will be posting will be those that I made one year ago. The material is the same. The book is the same. The lecture would be the same if I were to redo it. So I'm going to post those five videos as we go along, which means two days from now, instead of doing a new video, I'm going to post the video that I made a year ago for that part of the book. Now the only thing, the only problem with this, and it's a very minor one, is that if I mention any dates in those videos, they'll be off by a day or so because of the calendar. So I may say in one of these videos that your first exam is on the 18th of February. Actually, as, as you know, it's on the 17th of February. I told you that a moment ago. So any dates that I give in these videos, ignore them. Okay, so they were made a year ago when the calendar was different. But everything else will be fine. When I talk about this book or when I lecture on any of these theories, uh, the content would be the same as if I gave a new lecture. Now here's the good part, the good thing. I assume that we're going back into the classroom at some point, possibly on the 8th of February, which would be the earliest. When, I, when we do go back into the classroom, I'll be giving live lectures in the classroom. In addition, I will continue posting my videos from a year ago. So you will have two ways to study or to get access to the lectures. You can go to my live lecture in the classroom, or you can stay home and watch the video that I post on Canvas. You could do both if you want. You could come to class and watch my live lecture in the classroom. And in addition, you can watch my video or part of it. One nice thing about videos, as I'm sure you know, is that you can watch them more than once. Many students have told me that they do this. They watch the video initially, and then later, maybe when they're studying for the exam, they'll go back and watch some or all of it as part of their studying. So you can always watch a video as often as you want. They're gonna be posted on Canvas uh, as, they, as the uh, weeks progress through the semester, and they'll stay up until the course is over. Okay, so I hope you um, appreciate that. I'm going to continue posting the videos even though, even when we go back into the classroom and I start lecturing live. Okay, the rest of the syllabus is what lawyers call boilerplate. It's material that appears in every professor's syllabus for every course that he or she teaches. So it's material that I did not write, but I was asked by the university to put it in my syllabi, and I do, of course. It's important. You shouldn't ignore it. It's just a couple of pages. Why don't you take a look at it uh, when you get a few minutes? and make sure you're familiar with some of the policies that um, UTA has on various topics. Okay, um, I have printed here the class role. I mentioned a moment ago that there are 10 students enrolled in your course, you plus nine others. And I can tell you that there's an interesting breakdown of students by grade level. Three of you, three out of 10, are listed as seniors. Three of you are listed as juniors. Three of you are listed as sophomores. And one of you is listed as a freshman. 
Now the course is a 2000 level course, so I consider it a freshman or sophomore level course. But if you're a junior or a senior, it's perfectly fine to take this course. Uh, I'm just pointing out that we have a diversity of grades represented in this class. Also, I can see that your majors are quite diverse. Just looking at my list, I see at least one student is majoring in architecture, someone is majoring in anthropology, another in business analytics, someone is majoring in geology, accounting, philosophy, art history, sociology, and psychology. So students in this class come from all over the campus, so to speak, from many different schools, colleges, and departments. Now, if and when we go back into the classroom, it'll be interesting when we have class discussions uh, because people are coming from different backgrounds with different interests, and that creates lively discussions. So when we go back into the classroom, whenever that turns out to be, we'll try to leave a little bit of time for discussion as we go along. It won't be all lectures. All right, let's turn now to the reading list. And eventually, I'll, when I let you go, I'll, I'll tell you what you need to read for the second lecture this week. Take a look at the reading list. And let's begin. Let me read to you what I wrote at the top of this handout. Here's what I wrote. Unless otherwise indicated, the following readings are from Fred Feldman, Introductory Ethics. That's the book that I showed you a moment ago. There will also be readings in the form of handouts written by me, your instructor, posted on Canvas from time to time. So please check Canvas regularly and print whatever you find there. Always do the reading before you come to class or before you watch my video. Otherwise, you're liable to become confused. So it really does matter, in my opinion, whether you do the reading first or listen to my lecture first. It's, I think it's important that you do the reading on your own before you've listened to me at all. Struggle with it, try to make sense of it, get as much as you can out of it, and then when you listen to my lecture, the light should go on. You'll say, oh, I, okay, I didn't understand that when I read it. Now it makes sense. And if, it's in the, if you're in the classroom, if I'm lecturing live, you can raise your hand and clear up anything that's still confusing you. You can say, for example, uh, Keith or Professor, uh, when I was reading this material yesterday, uh, this sentence confused me. Can you explain it to me or give an example? And I'll do so in class. So I will be available in class to clear up any confusions that you have or answer any questions that you have. Whereas if you didn't do the reading but came to class without having done the reading, something I say may be confusing to you and you would not even be able to ask about it because you would be so confused. Again, do the reading first, then listen to my lecture. That's the proper order. Okay, if you look at the reading list, you'll see that I broke it up into topics. And these correspond to various chapters of the book. And by the way, even though, even though the book isn't that big, you can see how thick it is, this book contains 16 chapters. And we're covering only 9 of the 16 in this course. I think the book was written for a full year course in ethics. So we're going to be covering a little more than half of it. And the chapters we're going to be covering are chapters 1 through... Oops, let me get the book out. I don't, I'm not sure they're all in order. We're covering chapters 1 through 9. Whoops, sorry. 1 through 8. And we're going to skip chapter 9 and go to chapter 10. So we're going to take them almost in the order in which they appear in the book. The first chapter, the one that we'll be discussing two days from now in my recorded video that I'll be posting, is entitled Morality and Ethics. Morality and Ethics. It's an introductory chapter to introduce you to the course or to the, to the book. It has several different sections. That chapter does. We're going to cover only two of those sections, and they're listed on the reading list. 
we're going to cover the section entitled The Philosophical Study of Morality, and then we'll cover the section entitled The Value of Moral Philosophy. And I'm going to try to do all of that in one lecture. We're going to spend only one day on that introductory material. Now, the lecture is already recorded. I told you that I did it a year ago. So you know, there'll be a lot covered in that one lecture. Okay, when we're done with that, we're going to spend four days on Chapter 2, which is entitled, What is Act Utilitarianism? And then we'll spend three days on Chapter 3, and so on. So the reading list is very important. It tells you what we're going to cover out of this book. It tells you the order in which we'll be covering them. And it tells you how many days we're going to be spending on each of those sections and chapters. By the end of the course, you will have been exposed to a number of very old and very important ethical theories or normative ethical theories. Uh, utilitarianism, egoism, Kantianism, uh, a theory called Ross's formalism. And utilitarianism itself has different versions. We're going to look at act utilitarianism and also rule utilitarianism. So we have a lot to learn. I teach this course uh, every spring and have been for a long time now. In fact, I can tell you that this particular course that we're just starting is the 57th ethics course I've taught in my career. 57. I'm now in my 33rd year at UTA. I began here in 1989, probably before any of you were even born. I love teaching ethics. As I said, I've been doing it every spring for many years now. I always look forward to it. Believe it or not, I always learn something new, usually more than one thing every time I teach it. Uh, some of my publications are in ethics. Some of them began life in my lectures or discussions with students. So I hope um, we have a good and interesting semester. I think you're going to enjoy some of the material that we discuss. And at the end of the semester, you can decide for yourself which theory to endorse or embrace or subscribe to. Maybe none of these theories will be attractive to you. There are others. We're not going to be covering every possible theory, but we will be covering some of the main ones. So again, my goal is not to indoctrinate you. My goal is not to turn you into a utilitarian or a Kantian or anything like that. That's not my role. I'm an educator. I'm not an indoctrinator. I respect you. You have a mind of your own. My goal is to introduce these famous theories to you, explain them thoroughly, both the pros and cons, and you can make your own mind up at the end of the course about which theory is preferable, which theory is correct, and so on. Okay, so what do you need to read for the next lecture? The one that I'll be posting on Thursday. You need to read those two sections from chapter one that I mentioned a moment ago when we looked at the reading list. All right, once again, those sections are entitled The Philosophical Study of Morality and The Value of Moral Philosophy. And before I let you go, let me just tell you quickly what's already posted on Canvas. If you go to Canvas, log in, and click the word Modules on the left side of the screen, it will open up a page that shows you the various items that I've posted already. And I will continue adding to that list throughout the whole semester. So what you'll find posted in order are the syllabus, which we've gone over today, the reading list, which we've gone over. You'll find chapter one of Feldman, this book, I'll hold it up one more time. Chapter one is posted in its entirety, and I want you to read those two sections of that chapter before you watch my video on Thursday. I've also posted a handout that I wrote for you called Ethical Terminology. So read that over carefully. It's a little bit long, five or six pages, as I recall and it, it introduces the terminology that we'll be using this semester. So read it slowly and carefully. Again, if you have any questions about anything along the way, send me an email, and I'll 
respond as soon as I can. The other, only other item that's posted so far is the letter. Whoops, my screen started going dark. The only other item that's posted is the letter that I sent you by email yesterday. And I thought I would post it on Canvas in case you lose your email or delete your email. Okay, that's enough for today. It took only 30 minutes. My typical lecture will be between one hour and an hour and 15 minutes. I will rarely, if ever, go beyond an hour and 15 minutes because that's the amount of time we have available in the classroom. So I'm trying to, I want this lecture to mimic that. Actually, many of my lectures will be about an hour long. Why? Because in the classroom, typically students raise their hands and ask questions, and that slows me down as I lecture. In other words, some of the hour and 15 minutes is taken up with discussion. But when I lecture online, like I'm doing right now, there's nobody to slow me down. So I can get it all out sometimes in one hour. So it's not that I'm shorting you and giving you less than an hour and 15 minutes. I'm giving you all of the lecture. There's just no discussion to take any of the remaining time. Does that make sense? Okay, so we'll play it by ear. On some days it may take only an hour. Maybe on other days it'll take an hour and 10 minutes or something like that. I guess that's it. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Um, I'm looking forward to the course. Um, make sure you do the reading, those two sections, before you watch the video on Thursday. And we can keep our fingers crossed that we go back into the classroom on the 8th of February. Remember, though, that even if we go back into the classroom on the 8th of February, I'm going to make it possible for you to stay home. And that's because I'm going to continue posting those videos that I made a year ago. So it's up to you. If you're afraid of contracting COVID or you simply prefer to watch videos, feel free to stay home. Um, I'll, I'll give my lecture if there's even one student there. Um, if nobody shows up, I would be stupid to lecture, and I probably wouldn't, although I may stay in the room. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But I will continue to post the videos in case you want to stay home. Okay, that's enough for today. Have a great day and a great tomorrow. And I'll post that first substantive video on sometime on Thursday. Oh, one more thing. Whenever I post a video starting today, I will send you an email immediately after it's posted on Canvas. That way you don't have to keep checking Canvas over and over during the day to see whether I posted the video yet. Just be patient, check your UTA email, and as soon as you see an email from me saying that the video is posted, you'll know that you can go to Canvas and watch it. Okay, so I'm gonna do that in a few minutes, and as soon as I get this video processed, I will post it on Canvas and send you an email, and that will complete the process. All right, see you soon.